Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to News Dose, and this should be a fun week. We have Gamescom opening night live tomorrow. Of course, I'll be talking about all of that here sometime soon. But even before that, we've already gotten some pretty big stories to open the week with. We got some major news for one of this generation's best PlayStation 5 exclusives as it's officially heading over to PC sometime actually real soon. Though I do want to talk about the highly rumored Xbox version as well because I know there's still a lot of questions that surrounds that. Then also we got a rumor for a big Xbox game that'll be heading over to the PlayStation 5. And if this is true, I mean, this both surprises me and then doesn't surprise me all at the same time, and I'm going to explain why today. Let's just go and get right into things, though, starting off with a new Pokemon game. There was a Pokemon World event over the weekend, and unfortunately, they didn't give us an update for the new Pokemon Legends ZA. We are still waiting for that, but in the meantime, there is a new Pokemon game set for this holiday that I think could actually potentially be very popular. That's the new Pokemon trading card game Pocket, for mobile devices. It will be available for both iOS and Android devices, and it's now officially slated for October 30th. Even better here is that you can pre-register it right now, that way as soon as it goes live, you'll be able to download it and you'll be able to collect cards right away. Again, I think this game actually has a lot of potential. I mean, I don't think it's necessarily going to blow up quite the same way as Pokemon Go did, but the trading card game is still a lot of fun, and there's some really cool modern cards to collect. And they are going to give away two free packs to open every single day. So I could easily see people getting hooked on this game when it eventually releases again on October 30th. Now, we could also potentially get a new remaster that I know a lot of people have been asking for, being Bully. Now, this is an old game that released back in 2006, and it's actually a Rockstar developed game. Some fans will even go so far as to claim that Bully is among their best work ever. And for years and years and years, you know, these fans have been calling for a sequel. And even though that's yet to happen, it however does seem like a return through a remaster is highly likely, or at least according to a new Taiwan rating that was recently spotted online. And I mean, you know, the thing about these ratings is that, yeah they are often correct. I'm actually a little bit surprised by how many games gets leaked through these rating boards anymore. You would think that these game companies would try to do something to stop this from happening, uh, but I mean, I guess it is what it is. And well, we do have Gamescom tomorrow. I'm not saying that it'll absolutely be there for sure, but there is a chance that we could get that official announcement at Gamescom. And for that matter, there's also been rumors about Red Dead Redemption for PC. So Rockstar seems to be gearing up for a couple of announcements that really could happen at any moment. Now for you collectors out there, which I'm very much with you on this one, a really cool collector's edition for Sonic X Shadow Generations just got announced. And, and check this out. This is from Limited Run Games and I know some people don't like them all that much. I'll touch up on that here in just a moment. But in my opinion, this is one of the better thought out collector's editions that we've seen in quite some time. As you can see here, this includes a steelbook case, an art book, a keychain, a Dreamcast jewel case. That's actually really cool. The official soundtrack, some chow figurines, and then the main attraction, a Sega Dreamcast Sonic and Shadow statue. Now, Sonic Adventure 2 for the Dreamcast was actually one of my favorite games growing up, so I absolutely love this statue. This thing looks phenomenal, in my opinion. But, it is a little bit more on the pricier side of things. Between now through October 6th, you'll be able to pre-order it for $250. And again, some people don't like how limited run games operates. Now, personally, I've ordered from them several times in the past, and I've never really had an issue from them. But there are a few things that you kind of need to know going into it. One is that they do charge immediately and they don't really offer any kind of financial plans and they don't accept PayPal either. I think that's really a missed opportunity on their part just because more people would probably be willing to pay for some of their pricier items if they allowed customers to pay on a monthly basis. But... I mean, that's just how they kind of do things. And then the thing that really seems to annoy people the most is that it does take them a while to ship stuff out. However, in this case, seemingly you're not going to have to worry about that. Right now, they're claiming that their plan is to ship it out between October 25th and November 8th. So that's a pretty quick turnaround for them. And theoretically, you'd be able to play shortly after 
its official release. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about Xbox because it's been uh, just rumor galore since last week when we first heard that they might be porting over yet another game to the PlayStation 5. This originally came from Shinobi, which has a fantastic track record. So there's a very good chance that his information will prove correct. Now, when will that announcement happen, though? Technically, it could happen as early as tomorrow at Gamescom. We'll kind of see what happens there. But right now, everybody's trying to figure out what this potential announcement could be. Well, new information has since come out, and I'm not necessarily sure if this is linked to what Shinobi was referring to, but Nate the Hate, which was the original leaker for Hi-Fi Rush for the PlayStation 5, is now claiming that Indiana Jones and the Great Circle will be a timed exclusive for Xbox and PC. It will allegedly release this December for Xbox and PC, but if you're on PlayStation, it doesn't really sound like you're going to have to wait all that long to play it yourself. According to what Nate's heard, it'll be available for the PlayStation 5 within the first half of 2025. So, I mean, we're talking about maybe just a three to six month timed exclusive. And, and here's the thing. If this is actually true, then I think this is both kind of surprising and also maybe unsurprising all at the same time. Now, the reason that I say that it's unsurprising is really just simply because Indiana Jones started development before Xbox acquired Bethesda and it's not an IP owned by Bethesda or by Xbox. This is a licensed IP owned by Disney. Now, I know a lot of people are immediately going to say, well, Sony has Spider-Man and Wolverine, and those are both owned by Disney as well. So why are they allowed to have Disney-related exclusives, but not for Xbox? And okay, that's a fair point. But first off, Microsoft operates a lot different than Sony. Microsoft is much more open to the idea of having multi-platform games in their catalog. And that's where we get into the business side of things. Xbox, I don't think, has the same amount of leverage as PlayStation. PlayStation is a bigger and more successful console. Spider-Man sold, what, like 30-plus million copies on the PlayStation 4. Miles Morales also sold extremely well, and I imagine over time, Spider-Man 2 will also hold its own. Despite the PlayStation exclusivity, these are among the most successful licensed games ever made. So based on those numbers, I don't really think that Disney is overly concerned with their partnership with Sony. And especially now that they also put a lot of their games on PC. I guarantee you right now that Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine will both eventually head over to the PC. And I'm betting Disney knows all about that too. Whereas for Xbox, yes, they do also have PC, but the inclusion of Xbox Game Pass is probably going to majorly impact how many copies it can sell. I mean, the fact that they even managed to get this for Game Pass, I, you know, that's a huge deal all on its own. But yeah, I could see with Disney's involvement and, and just Microsoft's more open nature to multi-platform games, they might have come to an agreement to maximize this IP by putting it on the most popular console that can run it so i mean if this turns out to be true just again considering everything that's happened this past year i don't i don't think it's overly surprising but at the same time what i wasn't expecting is to hear about it so soon i figured with microsoft's more multi-platform strategy yeah they would probably do something like this later on but if they announce this before the xbox version even releases that to me is the part that's a little bit more surprising just because i i would think that they would want to capitalize on their exclusivity this holiday. So, I mean, we'll see what happens with all that. All of this is just a rumor for right now, and there's been no mention on whether or not this announcement would happen at Gamescom or if it'll happen after the Xbox game releases. Uh, but let me know what you all think about all this. Do you even believe this rumor in the first place? And if so, how do you feel about Xbox agreeing to such a short-timed exclusive deal? Now, of course, it is also coming over to Game Pass as well, which, like I said before, is pretty huge on its own. Now, one last thing before we go, and this is a pretty cool announcement. Square Enix finally made it official. Final Fantasy 16 is slated for a PC release. It will be available next month on September 17th for both Steam 
and for the Epic Games Store if for whatever reason you prefer to play it over there. You'll also get it at a cheaper launch price compared to what PlayStation customers had to pay when it first released last year. The base edition will go for $50, or if you want the complete edition that comes included with all the expansions, that will be $70. So I do like the fact that they brought the price down a little bit considering that PC fans had to wait an extra year, but if you're on the fence, or if you just want to see if your PC can handle Final Fantasy 16, you can also download a free demo that's available right now. I'm actually kind of curious to see how this game will run on the Steam Deck, so I might try that myself later. I, I'm not expecting the best results, but uh, truthfully, I, I, I just think that this is such an amazing game. It's really been one of my favorite games this generation. Like, I completely understand it, it's not as much of an RPG as some Final Fantasy fans wanted, but this still is a very fun game, and the story, I think, is just phenomenal. Uh, so Final Fantasy 16 gets an easy, easy recommend from me. Uh, but right now, so far, we don't have an official word for the Xbox version. I know there's still a lot of people waiting for that. And I, and I talked a little bit about this last week, uh, but like I said then... I, I wasn't overly convinced that they would announce an Xbox version day and date with the PC version. And the reason I said that is because of what Square Enix themselves said just earlier this year in an interview with Noisy Pixel when they were asked about if it was hard to say goodbye to all of the characters after the DLC. And they responded by saying this, It's not over in the sense that we have the PC version. Once the PC version is released, we're thinking about hopefully moving to other platforms as well however that's not really talking about the story it's more about moving it onto different platforms so i think with that in mind it is pretty clear that they do want an xbox version but for now the pc version was their first priority so i really think it is just kind of a matter of when rather than if this comes over to xbox in the meantime though if you have a capable pc again I highly, highly recommend Final Fantasy 16 when it releases on September 17th. Anyways, though, that's going to be it for this episode. But until next time, subscribe and peace out.